Hey guys, um, this is Jenny from uh, Cortis Jenny Technologies, and uh, today we are going to discuss on MPLST fundamentals, right? Um, I believe uh, a lot of folks um, are joining and may uh, will be joining soon, so uh, feel free to post your questions or Q&A section. Um, we have a panelist, uh, Aladdin, who will be answering most of your questions uh, on the Q&A section. And if there's any question um, that needs to be discussed, uh, we'll be discussing it over the during the presentation. All right. Okay. So today's uh, training agenda. Um, we'll be discussing about the basic uh, T fundamentals. What we are going to understand is um, how TE works, what was the need for having um, TE coming into play, what was the need for it, how it interacts or works with MPLS. Uh, then we'll be discussing about the link information distribution through various IGB protocols, OSPF and ISIS, that is specifically the link state protocols. Then we'll be discussing about the path calculation, how the path is set up, uh, using the RSVP, and uh, then we'll be having a demo on uh, uh, MPLST. So um, we are not going to discuss about uh, fast route in this section, but only the basic fundamentals of uh, MPLST, all right? Okay, so understanding traffic engineering with MPLS, what is traffic engineering? Right. Um, traffic engineering is, I mean, is is by no means an MPLS specific thing, but it's in a, it's a general practice. Right. It's actually manipulating the traffic to fit the network. So, say for there's a there's a service provider network which is um, having OSPF or ISI as its um, uh, IGP running in the core. Now, what happens is if you have a normal IGP running, um, your on Cisco devices or any of the boxes, it's flow-based um, um, path-made decision, right? It's specific, the step works on flow-based. No, it's not based on packet. So what it'll do is it'll decide the path based on the shortest path and have the traffic take that path. Now, what happens is the traffic flowing in one part of the network, it may be possible that the other part of the, other part of the network is totally underutilized or unutilized, right? And uh, because the other side being overutilized, uh, we may be dropping a lot of packets, so there might be a traffic loss. Whereas certain amount or certain resources in the network are still available, and we are not using them. So uh, traffic engineering is actually designed to um, make those resources usable uh, as per our own needs, right? As per the top traffic requirements in the service provider network. It's not like Traffic engineering is only specific to MPLS. It has been there even before MPLS was not developed, right? So uh, we'll see how, uh, what are the older technologies which support uh, traffic engineering. Uh, what is the motivation behind traffic engineering? The biggest motivation is the cost saving purpose, right? Uh, the overall cost of the operations within within the network, with the bandwidth resources or the links or um, the the core devices, um, or you may say the um, I mean if you are using ADM or Framelay uh, or or the layer two technologies, all the boxes that we need to deploy to have the traffic engineer made available, all then adds to the cost. Whereas we need to reduce the cost in any any network, take it enterprise or take it service provider. So the main motivation is definitely cost saving, right? And what it does is it ensures that the most desirable and appropriate path for certain traffic types based on certain policies. Now, with traffic engineering, you can decide, uh, decide which traffic to take, uh, which traffic can take which path of the network. It's not necessary that uh, only um, um, you, know, you decide, you design the MPLST and uh, you cannot control it. You can control it totally based on your QS policies, based on your routing policies, based on your VPNs, different things, as VPNs, you name it, right? So uh, you can control different things with it. Now, what was the previous solution? The previous solution was the overlay solution, 
right? Uh, routing was at layer two, right? Uh, this was possible through ADM and frame delay, uh, which supports the traffic uh, engineering capabilities. Um, so the layer two, with the layer two deployment in the core, the L3 would look like a full mesh, right? Um, although the physically it was designed in a way um, that we don't know what's going on, right? But for L3 devices, it would look like it's meshed with every part of the network and they, they communicate with each other, right? So routing at layer two, ADM and RFR is used for T. Layer three sees a complete mesh, right? One of the drawbacks of it, obviously extra cost because to get a full mesh topology, you're using so many devices within the core um, to get that functionality available, right? Uh, more complex network management because uh, what happens is you have two level of network uh, without integrated network management, right? Now you have to add training costs, you have to add technical support costs, you have to add field engineering costs and different other costs, uh, including the boxes that you deploy. So everything adds to the cost. And on top of it, with uh, technologies like ADM, there's overhead of cell tax. So what is the traffic you carry, you have to manage the place it on the ATM cells, right? So uh, again, that's, it's, uh, you will call it a bandwidth overhead, right? And uh, obviously the IGP scalability issues uh, for full mesh technologies or topologies, right? Okay, so what's the problem with the shortest path? Um, generally, the shortest path problem, we call it a fish problem. Uh, what's a fish? So um, uh, it would be like, uh, I mean, if you look at the, the topology that is shown here, it's more like uh, a fish uh, design, right? And what happens is, if you see here, uh, the link bit from A to B is 155 megs, B to E is 45 megs, and E to F is 155 megs. Now, say for if we induce a traffic of 80 megs, A to B is fine. You won't see any issue. But B to E, you will see it straight 35 megs of drops, means you have a huge traffic loss. Whereas the other part of the network, A to C to D to E, is totally free, and we are not using it. So how do we manage it? With traffic engineering, what you can do is you can segregate the traffic or manipulate the traffic to take two parts. Partially, traffic will be going to uh, A to B to E to F, and second traffic can go to, uh, or partially traffic can go to A to C to D to G, e, uh, D to E to G, right? So 40 max, 40 max. Um, now the fact is you're still left over with five max, right? So you're utilizing your proper resources within the network. That is the main goal behind or motivation behind traffic engineering. All right. <clears throat> Do we have any questions? Okay, I'll move forward now. So we'll be discussing about um, how CSPF works. So it's again um, the, the core concept behind um, MPLS traffic engineering path setup or decision making. Now what is, now we need to understand what is SPF. Now with SPF, it simply tries to find the shortest path, right? But CSPF develops in a different way. It's, it's constraint-based. So you add some attributes which are uh, defined, and based on that, you calculate the SPF, shortest path, right? So uh, with MPLST, what we do is we add a policy of bandwidth, we add a policy of uh, um, SNED, uh, link attributes, uh, administrative weight, there are other policies as well which are um, defined, uh, which makes the CSPF um, make the decisions for MPLST that which path it can take, right? So unless the constraints are met, the CSPF will not be completed and your T tunnel will not be formed, right? So what MPLST does is 
from the head end, it creates a label switching path to the tail end device, right? And please note that MPLS T tunnels are unidirectional. Unidirectional means it can only go one way, head end to tail end. If you want to manage the return traffic from tail end to head end, you need to create another tunnel from tail end to head end. So it's only unidirectional, right? Link information distribution. So um, <clears throat> what it does is um, in order to, um, I mean, once the CSPF is, is done, right, what we need to do is we need to advertise the information within, uh, within the whole topology, right? So MPLS TDT uses extensions to, uh, you know, uh, existing link state protocols to distribute the topology information. So what, what happens is like an LSR requires a detailed network information like resource attributes and, and other features that I was talking about in CSPF to perform the constraint-based routing. Now, um, with link state protocols, it's, the, the MPLS traffic engineering uh, is only possible with link state protocols. We need to understand that. If you try to use any other protocol, it won't run. Yeah. If you only want to run MPLS, you can run with any IGP in the core. You don't need specifically OSPF or ISS. But if you want to run MPLS traffic engineering, yes, you only need link state protocols, right? So <clears throat> now there are two protocols we all know, OSPF and ISIS. So in OSPF, there's a specific LSA, which is the op uh, opaque LSA type 10. Uh, which is area local scope, and uh, in ISIS we have TLV type 22, uh, which is used for MPLST extensions. Now, <clears throat> with with these IGPs and and these other LSAs and TLVs, we introduce uh, new um, link attributes like available bandwidth, administrative group, uh, flagging, um, T metric, which is also called administrative weight. Right. So. Uh, and, and we also implement the coloring concept with this because um, uh, with affinity, uh, we add um, certain values, certain uh, um, path attributes or link attributes which define or which help us decide the path that the T-tunnel is going to take, right? So all this information, so what happens is each LSR creates a T topology database with the information of resource attributes and this database is created independently with regular topology database used for uh, hop by hop destination based routing right um, this is what um, the main purpose of uh, having the link state protocol is um, okay path calculation so <clears throat> what happens is path calculation is done on the head end router for each T tunnel. So each router can have multiple T tunnels, say for like hundreds of T tunnels, each router can have, and each, each can have like one hop tunnels or different types of tunnels. So it's the path calculation is always done on head end routers. Each LSR stores the network topology, right? And link resource information flooded um, is, is flooded via the um, extension of ISIS and OSPF. So um, the T tunnel, the 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 head and router of each topo or any topology or any T tunnel um, initiates the CSPF algorithm, right? Decide upon the path from head end to tail end, and uh, once that is completed, then only the the uh, T tunnel can be made up. Otherwise, it cannot, right? So CSPF calculation uh, precludes um, uh, the link which are explicitly excluded by resource classes, uh, affinity or, or uh, um, you know, uh, which are insufficient. So if a particular link uh, doesn't meet the requirement uh, that we have specified for a T-tunnel, uh, then the CSPF will not include that link in part of the T-tunnel formation, right? It will exclude that. Therefore, we have allocated certain some, a certain amount of resources and uh, but the T tunnel, say for the link allows one meg of traffic for T tunnels, but the T tunnel actually it requires three megs of traffic. So when the CSPF calculation is done, 
that link will not be part of the, the CSPF uh, or the DTOM, right? That will get excluded. So, um, <clears throat> uh, okay, so uh, look for the best path from head, uh, from a head to a single tail, right? Um, so it's like from a head end to a single tail end, unlike OSPF. It can vary based on um, uh, different destinations. Okay, so next is the path setup. What happens is uh, that the path setup is initiated again from the head and router. RSVP is a protocol that is used to establish the forwarding path along uh, with the output uh, path as the um, uh, path calculation process, which we saw in the previous slide. So once the path calculation process is completed, then the RSVP plays its role um, to uh, set up the, uh, the forwarding path, right? Now, MPLST includes extensions for RSVP as well, which is originally specified, uh, specified for signaling protocol uh, for insert QS, right? Um, I'm not going in, uh, getting into the details of RSVP here. Um, it's outside the scope, but um, yeah, the RSVP itself within itself, it's, it's, it's a um, big uh, topic or, or protocol of discussion. Now, what happens is the hidden router sends a path message towards the tail end um, for each T tunnel. Okay, the path message includes um, the output of T tunnels, like uh, for path calculation or for the ERO, uh, which is called the explicit route object. Right. So what happens is, uh, what for the path messages from head end to tail end, it'll send the label request. Right. And for the return path, so. Forwarding path is different from the, uh, the the control path, right? So the path messages go from, goes from the head end to tail end, and the reserve reservation messages goes from the tail end to the uh, head end, which carries the labels. So when that is completed, and and the RC, uh, our reserve messages goes back to the head end from tail end, the T tunnel comes up, right? With so. Once the whole RSVP process is completed from head end to tail end, back and forth, that is when your T tunnel will actually come up. Uh, RSVP is also used um, to carry LSP teardown or, or any error notification within the uh, MPLST path. Um, there, there are different, um, um, you know, uh, RSVP messages that are used. Um, those can be. Um, um, read about in, in uh, the RSVP RFC, uh, you can reference that. Okay, so once this is done and the T-tunnel is up, now the question is, how does the forwarding happens while the T-tunnel is, right? Uh, the forwarding actually happens via four different policy, uh, methods. One is static routing. Uh, you create a static route, uh, then you have you create a static route to use the T tunnel, right? Uh, then you have the routing policy, uh, so a policy based routing. Uh, then you have auto route, auto route announced that allows all the traffic uh, to go on the T tunnel, right? And then you have forwarding adjacency, which actually makes the T link each hop work as a um, IGP link, right? So uh, we are only going to discuss uh, static or auto route in today's session. and. Uh, I think um, that's it for the presentation. But uh, now we'll be moving to the um, lab section where we'll be seeing uh, a demo of uh, MPLST on both iOS and XR routers. Right? Uh, any questions to now? Uh, there was a question that uh, asking that um, is a MPLST can only be used in service provider network. No, uh, the enterprises or even the data centers are now deploying MPLST because um, not all uh, all protocols are capable or all layer two technologies are capable of uh, traffic management, right? Traffic engineering. So um, yes, mostly it is deployed in service providers, but nowadays you will see a lot of deployments of MPLST within. Uh, uh, enterprise as well as data centers.
does that answer your question, Ria? Any other questions? Uh, so uh, this is the topology that we are going to use. Um, um, this is the service provider core, P1, P2, P3, P4, and the router collector router. Um, uh, the, all the other devices are the C devices, which, which we are not going to look into, but uh, we'll see how to set up the traffic engineering tunnel. And um, note that all the um, core routers except P2 are XR routers, right? So um, uh, we'll, we'll be um, using P2 as an iOS router, so this will help us understand um, how to configure, how to bring up the uh, C tunnel on iOS as well as XR. Okay. All right. Are you able to see my screen? Uh, the secure CRD window? So uh, we have uh, the core running um, IGP as OSPF. Okay, uh, let me increase the point. Uh, is the phone better, or uh, you guys still having some issues? Okay. All right, so uh, let me verify the configuration of IGP. Uh, just refer to the topology, um, right? Um, okay, there's another question. So T is not related to C or C router. So um, C routers, you can have uh, MPLS traffic engineering, but uh, generally it's not done. Uh, and, and the other part is, um, I mean, uh, why do you need to have traffic engineering for C links, right? Uh, generally, it's for managing the internal core. Um, you can have the traffic engineering deployed within your own customer network, but not necessarily between uh, the P and the C device, right? Um, Generally, even uh, unless there is, uh, the C itself is a service provider, you don't even run MPLS on it, right? So um, you don't deploy MPLS-T as well. Um, okay.
Okay, so um, in this topology, uh, as, a, as a simple traffic engineering term, what we can do is we can configure the T-tunnel from P1 to P2, right? Uh, taking the path via, say, the route reflector, right? So we'll have on P1 gig 0001, on the route reflector we'll have gig 0000, 0003, and on P2 we'll have gig 03, okay? Uh, and on the return path, what we can have is we can have a T tunnel from uh, P2 uh, traveling by a P3, RR and then D, P1. Okay, so we can define uh, we can define the traffic engineering topology in this way. Uh, by the way, um, I forgot to mention that uh, on traffic engineering tunnels, uh, you can define the path in two ways. One is explicitly, one is dynamically. So the dynamically means I'll be using IGP for calculating path, but otherwise, if you define the path explicitly, you define the path statically. So you define which path it needs to take. Otherwise, it's based on the IGP to make the decision. All right. Okay, now before we start, uh, so the first step for setting up the traffic engineering tunnel is to uh, configure RSVP. Right, uh, which all interfaces we want to make part of RSVP. On P1, we'll make it 0001, just this one. You don't need the other interface, so uh, it's fine. Space GI 0 slash 1, okay? Now, the next step is defining or enabling MPLS traffic engineering, right? Uh, for MPLS traffic engineering, what we do is we enable link, which is going to be part of the traffic engineering tunnel. Right? Now, once we have done RCP and MPLS, enabled MPLS traffic engineering, the next step is we make or use uh, the ICP protocol to advertise the raw MPLS router ID and the area ID. Okay, so router must be 100, okay, zero MPLS traffic engineering, router ID. Okay, this. right? You have optional, move back there. That's it. Okay. Show run MPLS traffic engineering. Show run RSVP. Show run router OS PF. Right? So we see that traffic engineering is enabled. We see the RSVP is enabled. Um, we see it's enabled on the IGP as well and we have defined the MPLS T router ID, right? Uh, we can also allocate bandwidth to the interface, right? Bandwidth, make it like five megs, right? Okay, so first con let's configure the path from P1 to P2 via our route reflector, and then we'll configure the T-tone, okay? Okay, on P2, okay, MPLS traffic engineering, we enable it globally. MPLS traffic engineering towns, okay? Uh, in gig zero slash three, Right, so we need to use it on gig 03 and gig 02. IP RSVP bandwidth 5000, right? MPLS traffic engineering tunnels and gig 02. All right, yeah. IP RSVP bandwidth. Okay. 
So we have uh, enabled traffic engineering. We have uh, enabled RSVP, uh, allocated the bandwidth. Now, again, uh, we configured the IGP for it. Right? So MPLS traffic engineering router ID, loopback zero, MPLS traffic engineering area zero. Right? So we define the traffic engineering for this area. So IP, RSVP, FX, right? So we have interface max is five megs. That's it, right? Uh, now we configure the route reflector. So which all interfaces? Gig 0000 and gig 0003, right? So RSVP, interface gig 0000 and gig 0003. So bandwidth is 5,000. If you don't define the bandwidth, by default it allocates 75% uh, of the interface bandwidth, right? So we need to remember that. Okay. Zero. Okay, so our configuration is completed. Now we need to form the T town. Okay. Interface tunnel T. This is how you define a T tunnel on XR. Let's make it hundred uh, one IPv4 number loopback zero destination. We make it the loopback zero of um, P2. So do show IPv4 uh, or do show route right we do have the path understand we have the path via this link but we are forcing it to go via this link right the igp makes it use this path whereas we are making it use this path right all right so um, now what option do we need to configure so we have Bandwidth, we can define the power for five megs, right? And um, okay, so um, here we can use auto route announce. Now the path option, we have two. We can either use dynamic, we can either use explicit. So let's use explicit because we have to make um, the T town use the path via route reflector. All right, name then. All right, IP explicit path name test. Okay. Okay. Index one. Next address. What do you want to define the next address? This is the link connecting to router one, P1. So we define next address as 15, 15, 15, 2. Then We define the P2 link. Show I think phase three. This is 25, 25, 25, one. Okay. Okay, 
So it shows that the DROM is down. Now, let's see. Path not valid. Okay. Right. So let's see here. To run HTTP. To run MPLS traffic engineering. We have the configuration properly. Show run API. Okay. We have configured the bandwidth as five megs. Destination two or run announce explicit name test. And what do we have here? All right. Okay, one more thing we need to recall is um, if you're having the step enabled or not. On Cisco boxes, we need to check if, um, if step is not working yet, your MPLS traffic engineering might not work. Right. So step is enabled and running. This is a kind of problem. Two. Opaque. Okay. okay, so we're now trying to troubleshoot why the traffic engineering tunnel is not coming up, right? So 2.2.2.2 is itself is not reachable. If you see here, the information says no path to destination. So let me see. Uh, sometimes the router keeps running for a bit longer and then causing some issues. Uh, 
uh, I'll be stopping the sharing um, for the moment while we are reloading the router, okay? Yeah, so the router is almost booting up. These are basically the virtual devices, so um, my setup has been running for quite some time, um, which caused uh, um, certain things to not work. So I'll wait for it to come up. Okay, are you guys able to see my screen? So the router has come up and I try to ping it again. Um, I noticed that the reachability is not there. So probably slash three, slash one, All right, uh, let me check that out reflector. Okay, show run interface gig zero three. Okay. Show run. Ah, there you go. So on one 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 on the P one router, there's an ACO. And we have this ACO part of this interface. All right. So what can we do is interface GI zero 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 two and no IPv4 access code that address. Okay. Show IPv4 template three in okay, we have the reachability. Okay. Uh, Jeannie, could you increase the font again? Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. some of the audience are asking about that. And that ACL was blo blocking the ping, is that correct? Yep. Okay. I was doing testing, so I can't get it. <laughs> All right, uh, is it better? Yeah, I can see it. It looks big, much bigger now. Thank you. Hey, is uh, everyone okay with this one, or do I need to increase it again? Okay. Show SPF neighbor.
Yeah, uh, my my configuration was a, was a bit messed up because um, I was playing around with it. So um, there was some cost, and then I was trying to um, create a asymmetric routing within the network. So uh, that was uh, screwing up the config. So yeah, let's clear it. Okay. Show SPS neighbor. Scan the two, four, five. Okay, so the destination is still showing alone. Okay, so let's take the box, show this. Show run RCP. Show run construction here. Show run router SPS. So this is fine. We do this. RSVP. Oh, so there's some kind of configuration or issue over here on the XR router. Oh, so oh, actually, my bad. The OSG process is 10, and I've created another process which is not required. No, yeah, so no router OSPF 100, router OSPF 10. MPLS traffic engineering ID zero. Okay, so you put the IGP MPLS traffic engineering parameters under the wrong process. Yeah. Okay. I okay. Yeah, I should have. Uh, um, no, uh, it's, um, I've been using hundred process hundred everywhere. And yeah, and I, this one you had ten. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Fine. So it's good that we are troubleshooting it live. So we understand what problems can we run into, and um, you know, show. Uh, so what are all the problems that we we had an access list that was blocking the ping from P1 to P2, right? Right. So if your reachability is not there, that is first yeah. thing. 
Um, second thing is your path should be enabled for um, MPLS traffic engineering, and your IGP should be enabled as well because uh, it's your IGP which will be carrying the um, MPLSC related attributes within the TIA and forming up the TE database, right? Now, if I created another process for MPL, I mean OSPF, and enable the T under it, but OSPF is not running on any interfaces for that process. So, you know, uh, it will not be carrying any, any link attributes to anyone, and it will not be sharing. So, definitely. So, with this, um, yeah, so link is up, and the T tunnel is up now, okay? Show MPLS tracking tunnels one. All right. Yep. It's just so you can see here. Okay. Yeah. If you see here the bandwidth configured is two megs, two thousand kbps. Uh, we are configuring an explicit route, so we can see the hop zero as this. Hop zero is um, this is the uh, XR router, the link towards P two, and this is. Um, the link to a, the link on the P2 router, and then this is the loopback address, right? If you see the show route two 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 two, you can see that the T tunnel is uh, being used to take the traffic from for two dot two dot two dot two, all right? Okay. Anyways, so um, this side, we are able to bring up the traffic engineering tunnel on the XR boxes. Um, we can do that uh, now for the return traffic. So this is a hand tunnel. So if you see here, um, on the route reflector router as well, show MPLS traffic engineering tunnels. What you can see is um, the T tunnel, P1, T1, that means that it is originating from P1 router. The tunnel name is uh, tunnel 1. And uh, the upstream router is this, local router is this, the downstream is this one, and this is the explicit route, right? This is the ERO. And this is a strict explicit routing, strict path, right? Uh, we do not create loose paths. Uh, well, we're not going, um, I'm not going to discuss about the loose paths or the strict paths here, but um, the, the loose paths are generally configured uh, configured uh, when we are using uh, intra-area, uh, inter-area MPLS traffic engineering tunnel, okay? And on P2, what we have is show MPLS traffic engineering tunnels, and we can see the tunnels up, my address, the car out, and this is the used bandwidth. Now we'll create a tunnel from T1 from P2 to P1 on an iOS router. We can use the same path, or if you want, we can use the path on via P3 that I was saying. Okay, let's use it via P3. Okay, so do show run interface GI0 slash 3 slash 2. Okay, so we have RCP configured, we have MPLS tra uh, traffic engineering tunnels configured. Right now, we need to configure P3 router, so gig 00 and gig 002. And on route reflector, we need to enable. Oh, sorry, Jeannie, we, we can't see the topology. You're not sharing the topology. Sorry. Oh, sorry for interrupting. Sorry. Hey, sorry. So on P2, we have gig 02 towards P3. P3 is having gig 0000 and 0002. That needs to be enabled for RCP and MPLST. And on route reflector, we need to enable additional link, gig 0001, all right? So let's move to first route reflector. Show run RCP in RSVP, okay? Oh, sorry, RSVP interface GI 0001, all right? Okay, MPLS traffic engineering, we enable this link again, we do the commit. Rest of the configuration, since it's already there, we don't need to worry about it. So show run RSVP, show run MPLS traffic engineering. All right. Note that I'm not specifying any any um, bandwidth configuration here, right? So, okay. 
to run router OSPF. I'll look at it first. It's 100. Okay. So configure RSVP, which all links we can need to configure. Gig 0 and Gig 0 2. AGI 0000002. Okay. And PLS traffic engineering. We enable both the links. And then we configure router OSPF 100. NPLS traffic engineering router ID look like zero, area zero, and NPLS traffic engineering under area zero. We do the commit. All right. Let's verify the configuration. Show run RSVP. Show run NPLS traffic engineering. Okay. And what else? Show run router OSPF. Okay, we are good here, right? So now we need to configure the tunnel. Interface tunnel 100, say 100. Okay, IPN number look back zero. Tunnel destination 1111. In iOS, we need to define the tunnel mode. So tunnel mode, MPLS, traffic engineering, okay? And all the rest of the traffic engineering commands start with tunnel, MPLS, traffic engineering. Tunnel, MPLS, traffic engineering, path option, right? One, okay, we can say explicit because we want it to explicitly decide upon the path, otherwise it will take the shortest path based on the IGP. Uh, we can name it test one, okay? Um, if you want, we can also define uh, the bandwidth, but let's try to do it without the bandwidth option, okay? Exit. IP, explicit path, name, test one, all right? Next address, what is the next address? It's going via to router three, so the next address will be 23232. Okay. After that, it will be router 3 to router 5. So 35 or 35 or 35 dot show IP before to trace free. 35 dot 2. Okay. And then the next address will be. See, the T-tunnel is already up, right? Because from route reflector to the link um, on P1, it's already enabled for RSVP and MPLST, right? So as soon as the, the path's completed for RSVP and MPLST, the tunnel comes up, right? Because the CSPF has said that, you know, the, the requirements are met, right? The attributes have met, but uh, let's uh, explicitly define it. So we'll be having 15.15.15.1 IP address. All right, and that's it. So let's look at it. Show MPLS traffic in tunnels, tunnel 100, right? So we have the tunnel in upstate, operational. So these are the four things that we actually need to look. Admin up, it's operational up, the path is valid, and the signaling is connected, right? If there's any problem, then these will not, I mean, either this will show down or invalid. These are other things that we need to look into. And the explicit route is already there. We can see the RCP labels here. Um, this is a label that is defined. Uh, now, let's look at the routing table, how uh, it looks in the routing table. Show IP route one 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 one. If you see here, the path is still being taken by gig zero one, but not by via the T tunnel hundred, right? The reason is show run interface tunnel hundred. 
we have not defined any auto route announce or static route, right? So what we can do is we can define a static route, IP route. Right? So as soon as you configure the traffic, uh, static route, but remember, if we don't configure auto route announce, only traffic uh, with the static route, it will only take the uh, traffic distance to um, the tunnel, uh, the 1.1.1.ip, right? Not any of the traffic. So um, I think that's it for the presentation section. Uh, are there any questions? All right, so I'll be stopping the recording.